John Sands Printing was founded in 1837 in Sydney and that arrow is pointing to the factory that remained in Sydney till the 1970s when it made way for the Darling Harbour projects and various expressways. Located down the uh, western end of Druitt Street which ran down past the north of the uh, town hall which you see there to the right of the picture you can see how all the area changed when all the work went on with the new expressway going through the old factory site. My father Ken Bond spent his entire working life with John Sands printing he was a lithographic printer, which is offset printing where the sheets are fed through the press. He started out as an apprentice at the age of 18 and immediately went off to war for six years, coming back, uh, fortunately, uh, when he was 24 to finish his apprenticeship. I even did my apprenticeship there in the 60s and I met the great, 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 how, how many great grandson of uh, John Sands. He was well in his 80s and I was about uh, 16, I think. The chap in the white coat, that sounds good, uh, was uh, Dad's boss, uh, the foreman. Uh, I think his name was Ron Hunt. And when he retired, uh, Dad and another chap vied for the position. And Dad got the position of foreman uh, simply because he was willing to stay back after uh, knockoff hours. The other guy wasn't, eventually became a tech teacher and had me in his class, which made things pretty interesting. But anyway, that's another story. So this is a four color Roland Man press, made in Germany and probably what you're looking at a few years before would have been a Panzer tank, I guess. But anyway, um, it was uh, one of the first in Australia and um, was really there to do the, the printing for the, the greeting cards and the various games, John Sands game, Milton Bradley games. And there's Dad with the crew who um, ran the press and put it together. That's Ron Tate in the dark overalls. Standing next to Dad is Bruce Fisher, one of the engineers, and the chap down the end is George Zavras, an offsider. I don't know the name of the other uh, people there. In the late 60s, early 70s, uh, John Sands had the move because of all the work at Darling Harbour, and they got a factory over at uh, uh, Tarman, the corner of Herbert and Frederick Streets, which I believe now is the SBS uh, studios. But then it was this new printing factory and this machine, a six color uh, Roland uh, 7, was one of the biggest presses that went in. And it was here where I sort of finished my apprenticeship and graduated to being a printer on another four color press. Uh, interesting times and it was a well paid job. Uh, something that I could do and fairly straightforward if you were a, a pretty organized person, which uh, I seem to be for some reason. With a trade behind me, I had the opportunity to pursue a career in filmmaking. Unfortunately, in those days, it didn't go too far. I ended up working for Village Roadshow, Film Australia, but eventually I came back to printing after eight years. Went back to it like a duck takes the water. Whatever wage I was getting in printing, it doubled. But anyway, John Sands itself uh, actually um, got sold off uh, not long after all this. And eventually, uh, well now, now it's owned by uh, American Greeting Corporation. Thank you, John Howard. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's an overseas company. Fortunately, uh, Dad had retired in 1984 and uh, was not there. And uh, I went on to various printing jobs over the, the following years. And then I eventually ended up working at a place called Beaver Press, Busy Little Beaver, which really reminded me of the setup at uh, John Sands. It was located at number seven, Hudson Street, Redfern. 
garden spot of the country. And uh, this is Beaver Press, uh, which no longer exists. Another printing firm that went down the Gurgler uh, in the 2000s. But we get a chance to have a look at this place, which was actually a good place to work for, neat and tidy. And there's the two colour man roll and printing press, the Parva that I ran. And this is a looking around the factory, pallets of paper, the four colour, the six colour over there in the corner. And here we have a roll and favourite, a much smaller machine <coughs> and a bit of a nuisance this one. But uh, here we are looking at the two colour Parva that I ran for many, many years and just looking around at the uh, factory here. There's another view of the four colour press. I don't think it was really a good press, it was a bit fiddly. And over there we see Bruce and uh, Manuel leaning up against the bench in his uh, favourite pose, uh, checking the work. And Manuel was in charge of the afternoon shift at this particular stage, working very hard there. So we have Bruce back over onto the old four colour press and that's his offside there, Max. Now Max started out as an offsider and uh, dedicated himself to learning printing and um, in the end wasn't uh, too bad printing. And I don't know what any of them are doing now, but here they are getting this uh, job ready on this machine. This is George, our handyman. I can't believe this. <laughs> and this is our electronic Bundy clock. This stairway leads to the Forbidden Domain. Actually it leads to the administration and production office and also the plate making department and film department and reception. Uh -huh. This is the reception area. Here I am going into the production department where they do the estimation of the jobs. Hello girls. Hello. Who are you hiding your face for? Because if you put that thing on, I don't want to know about it. Would I have this on? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Oh, I was so wrapped in work, I thought I'd come in and photograph it. You must be bored. I must be. Hello, Jan. What am I looking at? Where's Gunnar? I think he saw the camera in the flame. Uh, what the fuck going on with this shot? Time of motion study. <laughs> oh, there's Gunther. Let's have a look in the plate making department. Oh, really? yeah, it's black. Oh, God. Camera broken, do you? Nah, it's having a little bit of a career. This one's mine. Where can anybody work? I don't know. I'll be my man. This was Judy. What's this for? What's this for? <laughs> I'm just trying out, trying it out. You're making a new movie. Yeah. How to bore people in 20 seconds. Oh, How to bore people in 20 seconds. Oh. Yeah, I just came in to see what it was like. Yeah. So 
finally at last I have a job for the two colour press and what I'm printing here is the Law Society Journal of New South Wales. Fascinating magazine that we got in and you could actually read all these uh, fascinating facts about cases and uh, yeah actually you learn a little bit. So here's where the print is going on the top unit blanket which goes on the sheet uh, going through the impression cylinder and down below we have the second colour green. We have cloth cover dampers which put moisture onto the plate and repels where the image areas are. And here is the bottom ink duct as you can see you top it up. Oh, manual. This is manual. Jeff is doing here is he's washing the ink from the rollers. You do this with various solvents into a wash up tray. Did you Yes, and 10 years later, a slave, I mean, uh, still a printer, I had left Beaver Press and gone to other places, and then eventually I came back in the early 90s. But in 1997, something was going to happen to my favourite press. Here we are at Beaver Press, the last day on this press, which leaves next week. In actual fact, this printing press, a two-colour printing press, a roller, carver, was going to China, and I could have been going out the door, but they had another printing press for me, a four-colour one. And what I'm doing here is, after you've done some printing for a while, you have to wash down and clean the printing blankets. They're a rubberized uh, blanket that fit onto a cylinder. Now the printing plate, which is above there, puts the impression onto the printing blanket which then goes onto the sheet as it feeds through the press. But of course you have to keep everything nice and clean because you don't want spots in the job. And if you miss a spot, you could have a thousand sheets uh, worth a dollar each, no good. And that's why we have the printer's devil, because anything that went wrong was blame solely on the printer's devil. Now what I'm using here after doing the blankets with a uh, wet sponge and removing the paper I am now cleaning the printing off the blankets with a solvent and uh, yeah you do this and then you start up nice and fresh again. Now that top unit has the printing rollers once again rubberized 
and that has the main principal colour, the black ink that's for all your uh, lighting and everything. And the bottom uh, deck usually contains a special colour or could be a magenta, cyan or yellow. That's blue, red or yellow. And that puts on the uh, second colour. And uh, anyway, it takes a little while, but it's certainly a bit of exercise. Now, this is lithography sheet fed printing, not the old jobbing letter press. We feed sheets in, as you can see, a stack of paper there at the back. And here I am just starting it up. I'm just spraying on the dampers. The dampers put water on the plates, and where the image is, the image repels water and accepts the printing ink and here I am getting the machine ready so I can start feeding the sheets down the press feeder board. Here I'm just making sure the stack of paper is right. I'm throwing on the impression. There you are, the printing handles come on and off I go. So the sheets uh, that are coming through first uh, have the blanket wash on them, the image of it, and they gradually come good. So the sheets up the scratch and you put a tag in and you pull out a sheet to have a look to see how it's going. So the sheets come into the delivery, they get blown into place by those bars above where air comes out. Those numbers represent uh, right through the machine, so if you get a, a mark or a spot in the job uh, reading the print, uh, you go around to the corresponding number uh, on the plate and wipe the spot off the plate. And also at the back of the delivery is a thing called an empty set off spray unit. This puts a powder on the sheet so the sheets do not stick together and they help the colour to settle and dry. Now you can see the uh, image on the blankets coming from the printing plate and that sort of is in reverse and then it just gets transferred as the sheet squeezes between the back side. Now let's have a good look at the feed board. The sheets come down aided by those brush wheels and we have a side lay which pulls the sheet across to, it to register the sheet so they're always in the same position. And here is the feeder head, a series of uh, suckers and brushes and blowers, um, all designed to separate those sheets and easily feed them into the machine. Now I've sped the machine up to about 7,000 sheets per hour. And I've gone around to the back to start loading the paper on in my own offsider. And sometimes there's either 500 in a packet or 250 sheets in a packet. This looks about 250 sheets in a packet. And uh, I could be doing this uh, for several hours a day while the printing press is going. Hopefully uh, everything is going well. And basically lifting about two tons of paper a day. I now go around to the front of the press to uh, check on how things are going. Now we look at the front delivery control board, the same as around at the back of the feeder. Once upon a time it all used to be handled, but now it's just push button and that was really good. So having checked the front, I decided to go back and load some more paper in. Magically, a lot more has loaded in since I was there. Anyway. I uh, do my best to top up the stack. One of the things in printing is because it's such a dirty, dusty business, you're always continually tidy to keep your work area clean around the printing press. So here I am disposing of the sheet packets 
and the pallet which I will use to make a stack on at the front. So here we are later in the evening as I uh, work the afternoon shift and here I am changing the plate with the T-bar spanner and obviously enjoying it very much. So you do this because the next section of the uh, uh, magazine that I was printing uh, needed to be uh, ready. To become a printing tradesman, you do a four year uh, trades course apprenticeship at the Graphic Arts Institute. In this case, it was uh, the Sydney Tech College and uh, that qualifies you to become a printer. You also must have an eye for uh, colour and all that sort of thing. But towards the end of the 90s, uh, bosses or management of printing firms would start grabbing people off the street and start showing them, start them out as offsiders and then show them how to run a printing press. Why? Because they didn't have to pay them as much. The printing plates have uh, packing underneath. This is particular thickness of uh, cardboard for want of a better term. And it's a particular type of packing and it gets uh, built up to a certain height for it to be able to reach the printing blanket to leave an impression. And that was a single colour uh, section that I was doing there, um, which was red and uh, now I'm doing the top section obviously uh, where the main amount of type uh, was uh, set. This particular way of uh, undoing the plates was pretty much old hat then. Usually it was just a clamp at the end and you got your spanner and twisted it up and that released the whole uh, locking uh, mechanism for the plates. Well, here I am, upset at losing one of the best printing presses I had ever been on. It was a good little machine and uh, I could always rely on it and I looked after it like it was my own baby. But now here in the 21st century, I can print a four coloured job from my computer printer just as good as the job I printed on a million dollar printing press technology hey eh? anyway i hope you enjoyed this little uh, what may turn out to be a very historical uh, video uh, in regards to sheet fed printing incidentally this particular printing company actually closed in the early part of the 21st century as did a lot of other printing companies and now the majority of printing other than newspapers is printed uh, overseas in places like Asia, China, India, all these places. Yes, a lot of jobs were lost here in Australia.